Good morning, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, good morning. Hello. Good morning, teacher. Good morning. Morning, Renee. Good morning, Elon. Morning, Anna. Morning, Osvaldo. Good morning, Carlos. Hey guys, one more minute and I start calling, I'll start calling the roll. Good morning, Alma. Alma, cool coffee dance. I'm already on my third cup of coffee. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, this is. Good. Good. I'll begin with roll call. Alma Paola? Here. Ana Sofia? Present. Carlos Fernando? Here. Vista? Here. 
Clear? Jacqueline, vamos. Here. Jacqueline de la Rocha. Jessica Valeria. Joana Ruiz. Kevin Alonso. Here. Here. Rebecca. Here. Mariana Campos. Present. Miranda. Here. Here. Paola Verdugo. Present. Rene. And Stephanie. Here. Okay, welcome everyone. Again, good morning. How was the weekend? Okay, anything interesting? Hey guys, give me a minute to download the list and then we'll begin with class. Okay, guys, before we begin with the proper class, who can tell me what the, the live event you attended last class that we didn't actually have a class, what it was about? Because I didn't attend to, I had a meeting. So who can tell me? 
Remember, I just called the roll, and then you you got up to an event, a live event. Who wants to tell me what it's about? Anyone? The meeting or the last session? No, the meeting. Remember? I told you I'm just gonna call the roll, and then you. You went to a meeting. I don't know what it was about. Can you tell me? It was about like uh, bullying and uh, uh, how you say acoso in English? Bullying? How well, yeah, basically. No, it was about harassment. Acoso, school harassment. Oh, and harassment. So was it a conference where they talk? Yeah, harassment and bullying. In conference, like just a conversation. Did they talk to you, or are you just listening? Did you guys get to interact anything? No. Very little. They asked like two questions, and we answered them. But it mm -hmm. was basically just uh, a meeting where they were talking to us. Okay. And someone else who can tell me what exactly they told you about harassment and bullying? Anyone else? Could you repeat the question? Okay, Crystal said that they talked about harassment and bullying. What did they say about, about each of the topics? Do you have a comment on that? Um, they say about uh, there is Three three types of harassment or bullying was huh? physical, verbal, and verbal. And what the last one? I couldn't hear you. Oh, digital, digital. Oh, okay, digital cyber cyber harassment. Okay, what? Else? Someone else. Remember, this is participation. This is just to to start warming up. But it is participation. So someone else who wants to tell me. Let's go with first of all, physical harassment. What did it tell you about that? Anyone else? Our volunteer. To someone. Okay, Anna Sofia, go ahead. Did you ask about physical harassment or like in general? No, physical harassment because Osvaldo said they were with each type. So the first one he, he mentioned was physical. So could you talk about that? What they said about it? Yeah, well, they said that. Um, Physical harassment can happen in school, like when you're with your classmates and you like uh, pull someone's hair or like punch them and stuff like that. I mean, the name says it all. It's just physical harassment. Okay, yeah, so very basic. Thank you, Anna. Jacqueline, can you hear me now? Jacqueline de la Rocha. Okay. Would you like to participate telling me about cyber harassment? Could you talk? Uh, Anna told me about physical harassment. Could you talk about it? Cyber or online harassment, what they said about it. You hear that, Jacqueline?
Yeah. Did you hear? Okay. Got your answer. Okay. And yes, you should tell someone about it. Preferably an adult. Very good. Thank you. Um, someone else. Now a guy, Carlos Cifuentes. Yes, teacher. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Did they make no. a difference between harassment and bullying? Did they explain that there's a difference? Did they tell you anything? But do you mean the difference, right? Okay. Yeah. Did people in the conference tell you a difference between those? Okay. So, for example, uh, harassment, I think that it, for, okay, let, let me just work. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, so the harassment, I think I associate with um, how you mistreat someone or how you, like, break some, some, some rules and everything and stuff. Uh, and then, like, it offends to you and makes you, like, a really bad person. Mm -hmm. And then, for example, bullying, I think that I associated with uh, the public humiliation or about being in defense to someone who's, like, it says, really bullying you. And that makes you, like, um, how do you say uh, victim? Like you, you with bullying, I associated it with the fact that they make you feel like you're nothing, or make you feel like very uh, how do you say vergonzoso? Okay. Like it, it, it makes you in a skin uh, situation that everyone is like watching you and and then start to like humiliate and, and something. Yeah. and you feel ashamed. And you feel ashamed. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, I'm remember, this is participation. It's a topic from last week, but we have to discuss it. Anyone else? Well, I think that harass harassment, it's more like a way of discrimination, right? Well, it could be. I was asking about the, if they told you, uh, if they gave you a definition, did they give it to you? Or did they just ask random questions? Did they give you types of harassment, but did they explain the difference or did they give you a definition? Well, the definition of bullying, but it was just like presentation, so I don't like um, remember exactly what it is. Okay. Already, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you, Mariana. Someone else who actually remembers to give you? More or less, you don't have to give me the exact word, but more or less. Anyone else? Stephanie, how about you? Stephanie, there? Yes. Okay. What was the question? From the conference, what, what did you get that bullying is? Did you get a definition? Do you remember? Um, more or less? Like when someone bothers you, but it's like we... Something like that. Okay. Because uh, yes. Because sure. when it's only like one time, it doesn't count as bullying or harass harassment. Harassment, uh huh. Yeah, pretty much. If it's just a one time, person was just being naughty that day or, or botherful. But if it's constant, it is bullying. Especially if it's constant with the same person, because you have bullies who, who do that towards everyone, but maybe they. So they usually pick on, on 
a person they deem or they perceive as weaker. And they usually target that that person. Or persons, it could be more than one. Yeah, thanks. Someone else who wants to participate? Really? As a volunteer? What did they say about cyber harassment or cyber bullying? Or online bullying? Anyone who can tell me? That now there's like laws, like the Olympia law, something like that. Uh -huh. That like provide, pro, prohibit, <laughs> Yeah, prohibit. Yes. Um, like if you have photos of like um, another person of, of, of his body or her body, it's, okay. it's, now, like, mm, it's illegal? not legal, yes. Yeah, illegal is a word. <laughs> yes. And and you can be, like, locked down. Yes, yeah, something like can, that. Yeah, you, say, you can go to jail if someone, if someone places a demand or reports that you have been sharing basically nude pictures of someone without their consent. And yes, Elen, cyberbullying can be more common these days, especially since we are locked up and, and glued to our computers most of the day. So yeah, it pretty much became the number one type of bullying right now, because you're not in school yet. Anyone else who wants to comment on this? Stephanie, go ahead. Oh, it's because I remember that they told us a story about huh? a guy who killed himself because of cyberbullying. Yeah, that has happened. And I, I've had students, I mean, they didn't commit suicide, thankfully, but I've had students who were like completely depressed because of bullying. I had this one student about four or five years ago, who was a girl about your age. And I, since we were in, in physical classes, not online, I noticed how she started losing weight, like a lot of weight. All of a sudden, she started looking really, really skinny. And I talked to her. And it was because another girl who was her, basically her competition because she was working to be a professional singer. There was another girl who was her competition and who kept telling her that she looked fat and that she had big hips. And she basically kept harassing her about her weight and her looks and she took it to heart and she stopped eating and i noticed that she had her lunch and she never touched it or maybe she touched like a little bit of it and then she left it there and if you see someone every day you and besides that's our job to to look for signs of that and i noticed that she was losing a lot of weight rapidly and she was constantly like really sad or depressed so i talked to her and it turned out that she was being bullied by another girl and she took it to heart so it's important to talk about it Bullying is not always just physical, it can be psychological. He never touched the other girl. I mean, the other girl, sorry, never touched her, but she kept uh, putting her down with words. So that was bad. That's another form of, of bullying. Miranda, yes? Go ahead. You raise your hand. Yes. Um, Go ahead. I I remember that Ricardo, Ricardo, Ricardo. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Ricardo said that um, even when you're like really sure, I don't know if you have a boyfriend that you're really in love with and and he's really respectful and stuff and you're like, oh my God, he's never going to send it or anything or to or you send it to a friend that you really trust that the pictures always come out one way or another. Like somebody is always going to find out and you're never safe. So you better... Might as well not do it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much because even if you if, even if your your partner does not share the the picture, internet saves everything. Even if, if they don't send it, the cloud saves it, or even Facebook saves it, and hackers take those pictures down. So even if you don't actually share it, it can be taken down. So it's not really a good idea. Yes, Paola. Oh, teacher, I was just curious because I I wanted to know, like, 
what are teachers supposed to do if if some student comes to them in this school and they're like, someone is bullying me? Okay, what we're supposed to do first, first, we're not supposed to even wait for you to guys tell us. Like I told you, the example I told you about my student who was not eating and I noticed the weight. If we notice, and we notice that the person is in need of help, but they feel shy or afraid to talk to us, especially if it's happening specifically inside our classroom when it's physical or if it's online, we're not supposed to wait. We're supposed to try to approach the person who's suffering the bullying and try to get them to tell us. If not, directly ask them, depending on how much they, they trust us. But that's the first step, to try to approach the person and try to get them to, to confide in us. And afterwards, after we, uh, we have the facts, because also there's one thing that I have to mention. For as much as there is bullying and it's real, sometimes people who might be mad at someone else might make stories up. But that especially happens with couples. So we first have to listen to the person, and then we have to verify the facts. We have to, to check that what they're saying is true, because maybe they're just mad at them for whatever reason, especially if they're a couple or if they used to be a couple, but we have to verify facts because before we, we accuse someone of doing something. Once we verify the facts, then we need to, to report it to the authorities, to the school authorities. And if we can, if we have enough uh, communication with, with the student, try to help them ourselves, talk to the other person, to the one who's doing the bullying, see what's going on, and depending on the type of bullying or, or how bad it gets, we have to, to send them both to counseling. And then the, the school authorities need to report it to the parents. For example, I, I would not report it directly to, the, to your parents if it were your case. I would first talk to you, and then I would talk to the, to the authorities in school, and they are the ones responsible to talk to parents, not the teacher directly. That's how it's supposed to go. And that's why I'm usually telling you that if you have any any questions or if you feel like you can confide in me, that you can come up and talk to me and I'll listen. That's why I always try to, to get you guys to, to feel comfortable talking to me. That's the reason why, because it's part of a job to, to look for those, for those signs, especially since you're with us for the whole year, for the most part. Every day you're here at school, and especially when it's physical classes, more than half of the day you're there with us, so we have to look for those signs. Does that answer your question, Paola? Yes, it's sure. Okay. And again, if you ever have a problem, hopefully not, feel free to tell me. Even if it's in a different class and you don't trust the other teacher, and you trust me, you can tell me and I'll, I'll see you into it. I mean, it's not the first time I've done it, as I told you with my student, and I've had, I've had to deal with stuff with whole classes because they trusted in me and they, they came to me. So there's that. Yes, Miranda? And how bad does the situation have to be in order for the school to do something? Because I've had, well, not, not me, but like in general, I think sometimes teachers know or, or like they notice, but they just brush it off because they're like, oh my God, it's just a joke or something. Well, it, it, it has, has to do a lot with the, with the teacher's appreciation. Uh, Paola, you want to say something else, or did you just forget to, to take down the hand? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, no worries. Okay, back to you, Miranda, and for everyone in general. Depending on the situation, if it's really bad, you act on the moment, because you're noticing that it's getting really out of hand. But if it's subtle, most teachers should notice. Not everyone notices at the same time. I tend to notice pretty quickly, and I take to, tend to take action pretty quickly as well. But again, depends on, on, on the teacher. But it doesn't, we're not supposed to let it get really bad. As soon as we see a red flag, we're supposed to take action. Sometimes, especially with boys, not so much with girls, sometimes boys are too rough between them, amongst them, sorry. So sometimes, you're not so sure if it's bullying or if it's just the way they get along. I've had instances where I think that those guys are going to fight, 
and it turns out that they're just having fun. That's the way they get along. So with guys, it's sometimes harder to tell if it's just that or if it's actual an actual problem. With girls, it's usually pretty easy because the moment that you start get hitting each other, that's not common for, for girls. So there's a problem there. But again, it depends on the situation and on the teacher. But we're supposed to act as soon as we see a red flag. We're not supposed to let it escalate. Does that answer your question, Miranda? Mm -hmm. Yes, teacher. Okay. Good. Anyone else? This is part of the class, okay? I'm making you participate. We're having a conversation. It is this conversation right now. But we're also tackling the topic that you saw last class, and since it was during my hour, we need to talk about it. Anyone else who has any questions or more comments? You can raise your hand or you can start talking directly. Right here. Anyone else? No? Okay. Then if, if you feel that, that you've answered that I've answered all your questions, nah, then we'll begin with top of class. I'm gonna try to share a screen with you guys, but my program has been well, I don't know if it's my computer has been acting up, so if I cannot share it, I'm going to take a screenshot and then upload it. So let me know if you can see it or not. Give me a second. More like several seconds. Okay, guys, can you see uh, uh, the screen where it says transport unit four? There's a picture of a bus and a lot of mini vehicles in front of it. Yes, it is. Bikes and. Okay, good. I'm going to zoom on it so we can read the questions. Can you read them? Yes. Good. So we're going to take uh, uh, 10 minutes to answer both questions. Right now, you're going to do it individually, and then we'll comment there. Are we clear? What? OK, you, you have 10 minutes to answer both questions. And well, both exercises, because the second one has two more questions. So you'll, you have 10 minutes to answer those, and then we'll comment them here as a group. Is that clear? Yes. OK. OK. Any questions, I'll be here. Teacher, we, yes? we yeah. do it in notebook or in computer? You can do it on your notebook and just take a picture of it. Or you can type it directly to the chat if you want. OK, thank you. Uh -huh.
guys, if you have any question, you need to talk to me because right now, since I'm sharing the screen with you with the questions, I cannot change back to the to the class chat. So if you just type them, I won't be able to read them right now. You get that?
Guys, can I stop sharing the screen now? You'll copy the question? Yes. Okay. Two more minutes and we begin talking about them. Yes, Miranda. Right here in the chat. Thank you. Yes, Ugando, that's what you were supposed to answer. But it wasn't specific as to whether you mentioned the ones that you know here in Mexicali or in general. So either way, it's correct. You hear that, Ugando?
I'm not, I'm curious. When you say a bike, you mean a bicycle or a motorcycle? Both a bicycle. Can be, oh, okay, bicycle. Thanks. Okay, guys, I think it's safe to assume that most of you finished already. I read most of what you sent. Who wants to read their answers? On tears? Okay, Jacqueline, did you read yours? Me? Jacqueline Ramos, yes, you. Okay, uh, the first one. Uh, all of them, actually. Okay, only answers? If you want to. Okay, and in the first one, I put cars and airplanes. In the second one, huh? um, they are safe and take me to my destination without problems. In the third one, Nowadays, it is dangerous to use public transports and using a bike makes a risk of a serious accident since the person in the bike or motorcycle has no way to protect himself. Open transport. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I agree with you. Most of you were mentioning the same, the same methods, but I find interesting what you said that nowadays it's pretty dangerous to be on a public transportation, not only because of the COVID, but also because there have been, there's been an increase in hijackings and, and assaults and robbery. And here in Mexicali, I don't know if you agree with me or not, trying to get around the entire city on a bicycle, it's a big no-no. High risk of getting killed. Has anyone tried to move outside of, of your neighborhood on, on the bicycle? Anyone? I'm a Paola. You ride your bicycle. Have you tried it? What? What, what was the question? Have you tried around on your bicycle out it? Like trying to go to, to a store or something that's kind of far away from your neighborhood? Have you tried it? Yeah, I go to the Oxo <laughs> in Calimax. Is that too far from your home? uh no like 
five, no, 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay, that's not too far. But have you tried to get into the main street on your bicycle? No, I'm too scared. And, and, and you do because most people, most, most car drivers do not respect people on bicycles. I mean, the bicycle is following all the rules. A lot of people just treat you as nothing. I've tried, well, I've not tried. I've actually been on my bicycle traveling around the city, and it is a pain. It is very hard. It is quite dangerous because a lot of people don't respect you. I've gone around on a motorcycle as well. Same thing. People with their cars, they, they just think that you're nothing, that they, they have the right to be anywhere or make you move aside because you have a bicycle, uh, bicycle or a motorcycle. And it is very dangerous. So, yeah, a lot of people in here cannot use anything but public transportation or cars because it is quite dangerous to use a bicycle or a motorcycle. And Carlos, you raise your hand. Go ahead. Uh, so, teacher, uh, I don't remember, like, what, where did it happen, but I remember there were some cases of neighborhoods or people that really, really, really hate people when they are in bicycles. So they were like, for example, uh, making obstacles or making their their paths like really dangerous. Like for example, putting alambres in their, in, in, in the, how do you say? Uh, on the street. So yeah, so they they are riding into the street or they're riding into a, a certain place, and there were neighbors that they had like a planned path so to like put put them in danger. Like for example, putting rocks or or maybe like putting like some kind of stuff to make them like how did you yeah. say? To fall down, to make them fall down. Or have an to, to make them fall down. And there were there are really cases of people that they went to the hospital because there was like a rock or someone was was like throwing uh, things to make them fall. And we're talking about people that really, really, really hate uh, uh, people in bicycles and, and riders and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of messed up people out there. And yes, a lot of the bike riders or, or bicycle riders. I agree with you. Anyone else? What what type of transportation do you think we could use besides cars? Bicycles are off the are off the table here in Mexicali. But what other type of transportation could we use that could work besides buses? Anyone else have have an idea of what could work here in Mexicali? I see a lot of people in motorcycles, but not like us <laughs> i don't know yeah a lot of people use motorcycles but there's two types of riders and, and i'm telling you because I, i've run, i've i've used motorcycles long ago but i have and there's two types of riders basically here in, at least here in mexico we have the older calmer responsible riders and then we have people who are who work for delivery pizza delivery uber eats Didi, you name it. They're, they're all the responsible people who, who ride bikes as a hobby. Like, for example, people who are on bike on bicycle clubs. Like, I don't remember the names right now, but there's there's more than one bicycle club in here in Mexicali. Most of them are, are older guys, even older than I am. And they are all very responsible riders. They follow all the rules. They don't invade, they don't invade lanes or stuff like that. And then you have people who, who joy ride and people who who are who work as delivery. And if you've noticed on the news, most people who get into accidents, talking about bike riders, most of them are joy riders who, who think that the street is a race street. And yes, Stephanie, they do. They always get in the way. And delivery people, since they're always on a rush, they don't respect any rules. And those guys are the ones who are getting most of the time into accidents. And those guys are the ones that make the rest of people who drive cars not like riders because they are not responsible. So basically, you have two types, responsible adults and irresponsible delivery guys and kids or young adults 
who enjoy just speeding like crazy, and those are the guys getting killed lately. So I agree with you, Stephanie, they always get in the way. And Krista, yes. So you have people who ride bikes, but there's not that many, and there's, there's two types, basically. You won't find anything in between for the most part. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, do you think that, that something like uh, like an elevated subway in here could work? Like the metro, but instead of going underground, elevated like a regular train. Do you think that could work in Mexicali? Anyone have an opinion on that? We're talking about transportation, so we're talking about different ways of transportation, what could work in here. What do you guys think about a, a regular subway here in Mexicali? Could it work? Anyone? I thought that it was impossible to have a subway here. Why? I tend to agree with you, but I want to know your opinion. Told me. Uh -huh. I don't remember it very well, but I thought that it was uh, because we are uh, like very low from the sea level. So it would be very difficult to put a subway here, uh, something like that. Yeah, on the ground, yes, because you have, the water level is pretty shallow. So you have that problem. But I'm talking about an above street, like a regular train, a subway for public transportation. Do you think that could work? Who has an opinion besides Krista? And thanks for participating, Krista. Anyone else? Remember, guys, I told you, as much as we're going to be writing, we're going to be talking a lot here. So I want to hear you guys talk. I talked a lot already. Kenny, would you like to comment? Do you think that a regular on the street subway could work? Well, a train, not a subway. Regular train, like for, for public transportation here, could it work? Um, I don't think it could work because I feel like Mexico is a very small city. So. Uh -huh. You know, things like uh, public trains and, and, and the metro wouldn't work here. And since there's uh, a lot of uh, Mexicali smell for the, its water, places like that would not, uh, not be a pleasant place. Yeah, I can start agree with you. Thanks. Someone with a different opinion? Take it to work? Or do you all agree that it's kind of highly impossible to get a regular train working here for just for public transportation? Do you all agree? Or do you agree? Hey, Valdo. Yes, okay. Thanks. And how about those those bikes with passenger seats, like the ones you see on the picture, on the one that I shared? Could those work? If you look at the picture where the questions were, you see a lot of people with bicycles that are pulling seats for, for two people, passengers. Could those work here? Okay, Anna, you say maybe. Why maybe? Have to elaborate. Because um, Mexicali has a lot of main streets, and sometimes people are not like um, really aware of how dangerous it could be to be like riding on the bike on the streets and many people um like don't respect the i forgot the word but like they don't stop in the camera photos oh, okay. and, yeah and it's really hard like 
just for one person to be riding a bike and having like another person in the back um, well i think it's more difficult okay thank you in which parts of the city do you think that could work maybe like in the city center where you have more like street uh, more streets for people to walk around for pedestrians do you think in, in areas like that it could work Elaine, you say you don't. Okay, so you share Anna's opinion. Anyone else? Me. Okay, go ahead. I think that uh, it's quite difficult because uh, it's having people in the middle of the day, you know, with the high temperatures we have. Uh huh. Hey, Kali lead to a lot of I don't think that's but I like how can I say it in Spanish if you know how to say, if you don't know how to say it in English no it's because I don't <laughs> I don't know how to say it in Spanish too like, oh, okay uh, yeah like a lot of problems with people like okay okay thank you Len, you it's will work because of the weather. Yeah, the, the weather here is pretty prohibitive. Even if you have areas where you could actually go around on bike, yeah, it's still pretty tough on, on the summer. Especially at noon, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., it, it would be pretty tough. If you needed to get somewhere, like, well-dressed and, and well-groomed, if you went there on a bicycle, you'd probably get there all sweaty and smelly and wet in general. So, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea either. Any other ideas, or is that it? No? So Mexicali doesn't, have, doesn't really have too many options besides cars and buses. OK, hypothetical question. Walk, yeah, well, Stephanie, yes, walk one. When it's a short distance, but I don't think walking really long distances during the summer is a good idea. If you don't have an, any other option, yeah, but it's not a really good option, again, for long distances. Okay, that's it for that, for that part of the topic. We're going to, I'm going to share again the screen with you guys. Let me know if you can actually see it. Now you're going to be reading. This time it's reading comprehension. First you're going to read and then you're going to answer activities. Okay, let me share this with you again. Oh, question. Has any of you been able to purchase the book already? Did you have it from last semester? Anyone? Yeah? I bought it, but I don't know what's next. Uh, you bought it and did you register in Cambridge? No. Okay, you need to register in Cambridge. And remember, I shared with you guys a, a tutorial on YouTube on how to redeem your code? Uh, the first thing you need to do is register in Cambridge. Once you do that, if you have problems, you let me know. But first, you need to register in Cambridge. That goes for everyone. Did you get it, Stephanie? Yes, but I don't know, like, where we're going to receive the codes. OK, remember from the first class, we gave you a link where you were going to download the app for UVM where you buy it, and you, you already did. And then I shared a second one that, that was called, if I'm not mistaken, Bibliotecas UVM. Did you, did you get that, that link? I shared it to you guys on the first class. If you have, have that link, I told you to save it, put it on favorites. If you have that link, that is where you're going to receive the actual book. 
that's basically the, the the stock the like the warehouse that's what you pay it on the on the app but you receive it on that page so for those of you who have who already paid for it but haven't received it you need to check that page the page sorry and if you don't have it after we finish with this exercise i'll, I'll share it with you again remember you need to the books are already showing so you should get it this week so you can start working on the platform you all hear that teacher yeah i bought it today um uh -huh. and i already have my account of cambridge so what i need to do nothing okay so if you already have your account and did you verify that you have a code for the book Right, it should have a code. Once you check your book, it should have a code for the Cambridge platform. Next class, I will give you the, the code. If a class already assigned, I'm going to give you the, the class and we'll do that here in class. That goes for everyone. The next class, we'll check for those of you who already have it and those who don't, you follow us and, and see how it's done. Because you're, you're going to access my class with the code I'm going to give you. But for that, you need to have the book ready. Is that clear? Yes, thank you. Okay, so that, that's going to be the first thing we'll do. Well, after taking the roll call, that's going to be the first thing we do. Right now, I was sharing the, this information with you guys. No, not that one. Sorry. This one. Okay, can you see it? It's a big text talking about transport in Abu Dhabi. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, do you want me to make it bigger or can you read it as is? Can you make it bigger, please? Okay. Is that big enough? Yes, thank you. Okay, recommendation. Take a screenshot of it because you're going to be using it to answer the questions afterwards. Right now, I want you all guys to read it completely. You have 10 minutes to do so. Once you finish, I'm going to share the page where you have the activities. But it's a good idea to take a screenshot of it. So if I stop sharing, because I'm going to be sharing the questions, you still have it at hand. Are we clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Just give me a second. I'm gonna take a restroom break. I'll be right back while you read. I'll take a restroom break. I'm gonna turn the microphone off for a couple of minutes. Then I'll share it. I'll share the screen back. Give me a second. Teacher, can you zoom it up a little bit, please?
Guy, did you all take a screenshot of the of the page so I can stop sharing it? Or are you reading directly from it? Can you hear me? Yes. So can I stop sharing it? Yes. OK. While you keep bring on with you guys the, the link where you can check if you have your books or not, again, give me a minute. Do you hear that, Elaine? Jacqueline, if you're hearing me, sometimes it takes less, but yes, it could take up to 48 hours before it shows. You get that? Carlos, thanks for sharing the screenshot. I just uploaded the link for the Bibliotecas where you should receive your book. If you paid for it longer than 48 hours and you still haven't received it, you can check there. Len, you should check there if you already have it. That's basically the warehouse where you receive it. Teacher? Yes? Uh, I already have the code, but it's unlock 3A. Yes, unlock 3A. But last semester we were in unlock 3B. Oh, okay. That's weird because I just had a, a meeting uh, last Friday. Double check that you guys were using 3A. So I don't know what happened. Is that the one you bought? 3A? Yes, but I feel like the reading I have already read it before. Okay, that's weird. I mean, we were in a different group and somehow got moved. I'm not sure because they were making a lot of movements to, to make the groups shorter. So that could have been it because 
again, we double checked, and all of you guys are on the list for group for 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 the group for three A, and the coordinator double checked. You want to come in? So I don't know what happened, but let me double check with her. Maybe you weren't supposed to be in this group after all. I don't know. Yes, Miranda. Teacher, if I bought it from the app of Connection OVMA, it uh -huh. still it still comes the same, right? Like I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually it's better if you buy it there because that makes that that ensures that you have the code for the class, but you still need to go to Becca Sumema. That's where you should receive the book. Think of it as this. The app is the, is the cashier, and the bibliotecas is where you go and physically pick it up, or where you would have physically picked it up. But now, it, since it's online, you have to check it there. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, are your classmates the same from last semester, or did you change entirely? No, I have. Well, yes, it's the same. So it's the same? Group? Um, well, they divided, but yes. Yeah, I think that maybe in that division, that's where it got changed, and maybe that 3D and now 3A. That could be it, because again, they they checked against my list. I was I was there in the meeting, and we were checking student by student, and all of you were supposed to be in this group, and that's the book we're using. So if something changed. It's probably that that when they make the the separation of the groups when they split them, maybe that's why. And if that's the case, sorry about that. You're probably you're, you're seeing something that you already saw, at least part of it. Does that make sense to you? Yes, but it's like strange. Like, I feel like we're repeating the same book. Yeah, I know. You could talk to coordinator about it if you already did the course you could talk to, to her about it and you know what I'm gonna take a note and I'm, I'm gonna try to tell her myself even if you want to talk to her personally and see what happened there let me take a note give me a second What part of 3D did you see last semester? The first part or the last part of 3D? It was the first. The first part? So technically, you should be seeing 3D second. Could you repeat it? It's because I didn't listen. Oh, OK. I, I said that technically, you should be working with the second part of 3D. Uh-huh. The last teacher told us that. Uh, let, let me check with her because uh, uh, that's the information I got and that's the book that they see. So I don't I don't know what happened, but I'm gonna have to talk to her and see what she said. And then I'll let you guys know. Okay. I'll have the information for, for next class, I promise. Whatever she told me. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, now I'm assuming that most of you are pretty much done. I'm going to share now the part about the exercises. Again, if you can, take a screenshot of it.
Let me know if you can see the page or not, please. How about now? Can you see it? I need someone to verbally confirm because I cannot I'll go back to the screen right now. Otherwise, it stops sharing. So, can you see that or not? Anyone? No. So, those typing, yes, can you see it? Yes. No, yes. Okay, good. So you're going to be completing all three exercises. Again, you're going to be using the text you just read. That's why I told you to keep the, the screenshot in case you needed to go back to it. Are we clear? Yes. And all the parts, all the parts that say work with a partner, you're going to do it alone. You need to look at those uh, those photographs as well. So I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna leave it like that while you answer the first exercise, and then I'll move it so you can do the other ones. Okay. Can you all see the pictures? Yes, this is. Okay. Is it okay if I move it around so that you can read the whole text, even if you already saw the pictures? Or do you need me to read them there? I'll leave it like that for a little while so you can see both the first exercises and the pictures. And then I'll move it to the third one. Teacher is uh, the number one and number two, right? Number three as well, but in order to do number one, you need to look at those pictures, so that's why I'm waiting to move it. But number three as well. Only answers or with the other information? Well, you can put the number and the answer. You don't need to copy the questions again. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Can I move the image now so you can read exercise three as well? Or do you still need to look at the pictures? Sure. Can you zoom it up a little bit? It's, I'm blind. <laughs> Please. Okay, so I'm going to move it. Um, okay, how about there? Can you read that? Um, yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And then I'll move it so you can get number three as well.
Can you move the screen around so you can read number three completely or not? Not yet. Yes, it's you. Okay. Can I stop sharing the screen now, guys? Uh -oh. Yes.
Guys, we have 10 minutes worth of class. Can we start reading the answers for the first one? Does everyone have the first exercise completed? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Would you like to read the first one, please? Okay. Um. So the first question was, let me check. Okay. What problem can you see in the first photograph? I put traffic congestion. Okay, very good. Also, the two? Yes. Okay, how could the... Okay. How could the vehicle in the second photograph be a solution to this problem? I put carries more passengers and doesn't contaminate too much because it's an electric vehicle that works with solar energy. So no CO2 involved. Very good. And the last one was, what do you think is different about the city in the second photograph? Well, um, I put that is way too modernized and expensive, and it's it's just like a city of the first world. So it's pretty futuristic. Yes, indeed it is. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Someone else who wants to read the answers to number one to see if you did something different. Thanks, Mariana. Someone with a different answer to number three. I had that it will cause less pollution. Okay. Yes, it will. Thank you. Different answer? Someone else? Anyone? And then we'll move on to exercise number two. Who wants to help me out with the first two questions? Miranda, could you help me out? From exercise two, questions one and two, please. Did you see me? Yes. Did you help me out? Um, yes. Exercise, exercise two, question two. The ones yes. about the pictures. No, 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 exercise two, where it says the areas that form the edge of a town or city, it's those. Second exercise. Of oh, the one where you have to put the words? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Um, the first one, the areas that form the edge of a town or city. Out, out here, outskirts. Uh, outskirts. Outskirts, uh-huh. And number two, two? Uh-huh. Away or road between places, route. Route, very good, thank you. Now someone else, three and four. Osvaldo, could you help me out with three and four? Okay. Um, wait. Ana Sofia, you raise your hand. Go ahead. Three and four? Uh-huh. Uh, yes. Well, number three says, how long it takes to get away from home? I put commuting time. Very and good. In number four, it says too many cars and lorries close together and unable to move. I put traffic congestion. 
Yes, very good. Thank you. Someone else for five and six? Evando, you. On five, I put major issue. On six, I put vandalism. Okay, thank you. Now seven, eight, and nine. Anyone else? Jacqueline, go ahead. You rose your hand. Seven, carbon neutral, eight, vehicle, and nine, rapid transit. Very good, thank you. And now, finally, exercise three. Questions one and two. Someone else? Carlos, if I ask, could you help me out with questions one and two from exercise three? Uh, yes. So, uh, the question number one what is a PRT? Uh, the PRT. Okay, I found it. What is question number one? What is PRT? Uh, it's the yes. it's the personal rapid transmit, right? Yes, correct. And number two. Uh, oh, the, the my how do you say? It's not working for me. Let me just. Carlos, if your connection is not working, it's okay. Don't worry. You already did one. Krista, could you help me out with number two and three? I'm sorry, teacher, but I hadn't finished because I was oh. still copying. Sorry. Okay, well, don't worry. Um, the... Jessica, can you help me out? Teacher, I think Jessica is having trouble with her internet. Okay. Could you help me out again, Miranda? Yes. Um, which one's the, the three, last one? Three and four. Uh, I have three, but I don't have four because I didn't um, alcanzar <laughs> to copy the question. Oh, okay. Don't worry. Okay, three I put an underground rail system and a light rail transit transit system. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, now who can, someone who can help me with number four? Sorry, but yes, number four. Uh, me. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Number four says, what is the main problem with Mazar City's plan BRT system? I put that it costs a lot of money and uh, people was, I mean, vandalism and safety issues. Very good. Thank you. And finally, number five, who wants to read that one? Stephanie, could you help me out with number five? Yes. Um, it's how does the PRT work? And the answer is by magnet. Okay, 
Very good. Thank you. We finish our class today. See you next class and take care. Bye, teacher. teacher. Thank Bye, you. Bye. Teacher, I uh, sorry I couldn't uh, say the answer because I was having troubles with the internet. But uh, thank you, teacher. Oh, you're welcome. And I uh, maybe you didn't hear me. I said that no worries because I knew you were having problems. Bye, everyone.